Folks, welcome to the Jake Feinberg Show down here at 2nd Avenue Deli in New York City on a beautiful fall afternoon with an incredible musician and human being, Rodrigo Sines. Welcome back to the Jake Feinberg Show. Good to be here. Great. New York. Can you, do you have a memory of, uh, a good memory of, the, of when you first connected with Ruben Blades? Yes, I do. Um, back in the early 80s, I was doing, um, I was singing in quite a few uh, commercials, Spanish uh, radio and television commercials. And Ruben was, uh, he's always been in his prime. The guy is like timeless, in my opinion. Yeah. But he, he was very popular at that time. He had a, a hit album called Siembra, which had, had really put him on a very prominent space in the music of uh, the Latin music of the time. And he has this great, very recognizable voice. And uh, what happened was he was being used as a soloist in many of those commercials. And what happened, Ruben is a great songwriter and he understands music like few people, but he does not read music, which is fine. A lot of the great ones like Errol Garner, they did not read music. So Ruben, um, they would get him in the studio and, and to do a, a commercial and um, he would be given the part and, and I read music. So he would come up to me, Rodrigo, show me this, uh, how, do you, how does this go? And I would sing it to him and he would pick it up and before I even finished, he yeah. had it. He, had, he has that kind of knack, okay? So we worked together for quite a while around that time. And one day we were walking out of the studio and he says, uh, Rodrigo, hey, listen, man, I'm, I'm not going to see you for a while. <clears throat> I said, what was going on? I said, well, I'm going to Harvard. Ruben was admitted to Harvard University, that Harvard University in Boston, uh, to start as a law student. He moved away and he went to Harvard, he finished Harvard, he became a lawyer. And um, I don't know what he did with his law, but he that was something that That's he amazing. wanted to accomplish. That dude and was all over those, yeah. you know, Fania and Tico. Were you, did you ever get a chance to get hip to those albums, the Larry Harlow albums and the, you know, the, the, the Fania All-Stars? Were you hip to those cats? Yes, I knew some of those people. I, I was uh, playing at a, at a Cuban restaurant in, uh, in Midtown Manhattan. And uh, we were in a group, a Latin group in that place. And uh, there were a lot, a lot of those cats would come in and I uh, met Johnny Pacheco. Oh, Johnny Pacheco, yeah. Yeah, a lot of those guys used to come in, like uh, Chico O'Farrell, of course, would come in once in a while. The late great pianist, Argentinian pianist Jorge Dalto. Oh my God, yeah. Ray Maldonado too, maybe. All of those yeah. guys, many of those. Dude, guys can you just talk about those? The, the essence of those cats. I mean, I, to me, like that is America. That was America. Yeah, well, that place was like the place, the Latin place, where all the. I mean, not only uh, Latinos, but a lot of uh, Americans or North Americans were coming there, like. Like very famous people would stop by. There were pictures in the wall where Victor, the owner, he had a picture with Paul Newman. I think Ronald Reagan came in there once. It was like the center of the Latin universe, uh, the center of Latin cuis Cuban cuisine. What was the name of the club? Uh, Victor. Victor's. Yeah, Victor's. Yeah. Victor's Cafe. 52nd. He had another one up in, in, in Columbus Circle. Did near they, Columbus, I'm just Columbus curious. Avenue. Like, what was the? It sounds a little bit odd, but. Um, you know the thing I love about those cats, like they didn't have it necessarily have a drum kit. It was like timbales and cong bongos, congas. It was like this sort of amazing rhythm that they would have. I mean, the, the 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 Latin groove stems from everything but the drum kit. Well, everything starts with the clave, and then you go from there. You got the uh, timbales. You go on the shells of the timbales. Chaka 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 chaka. That creates a pulse, and you put the clave on top of that. That's right. And then you put the the maraca, shik, shik, shik. and 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 then you go with the bass. It's something different. It's like an incredible uh, form of percussionistic counterpoint. It's like everybody's doing something different, but everything fits together, and it just creates a desire for your body to move. Man, it's just. 
fact, I was just listening to um, yeah. a, a friend of mine who was doing a, a, like a live performance, just something casual in, in, in Miami, where he lives. And he had a popular band, and he still does. His name is uh, Carlos Oliva, and his band is called Los Sobrinos del Juez. The Judges, Nephews, and Nieces. That's the name of the band. And they were doing a live performance, and, and there it is, man, like, and the people are just moving around. And there's like, no oh, drum kit. No drum kits. You don't need it. The pulse is established by in, in different ways. That's right. With the cowbell, cook, cook, cook. There's your pulse, and everything is going off that with the clave. And that just doing that makes you want to move. Did you? There's, there's one more cat that I, Bobby Rodriguez. The bass Great player. bass player, yeah. man. Dude, that dude was ferocious. Yeah, he was one of the main, main, main guys in the 70s, probably early 80s. I never met the man. Okay, so you weren't necessarily going in on sessions and those guys were, were no, with you. No, yeah. maybe a couple of times, but I was never really a part of that uh, circle. I dig. Of musicians. You know, Rodrigo, I just wanted you to talk a little bit about what keeps you when you wake up in the morning what is inspiring for you what, what inspired you today outside of coming and hanging with jake feinberg i mean what keeps the fire burning for you i don't know just uh, just glad to be uh still alive yeah <laughs> grateful one. yeah and uh, grateful to be alive and, and just uh make the best out of the day make the, you know uh do something i have to do around the house get a little breakfast you know uh relax for a few minutes and then like in the afternoon Work on something like uh, plays of uh, practice some trumpet, uh, do some vocalizing, try to get some ideas, uh, go out for a while. I'm retired now, so uh, just try, try to make the best of your days. Do work around the house, and, and I have a lot of a uh, lot of stuff that I need to do in my house. I have a lot of uh, little things that need to be taken care of, but it's 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 taken shape, and I'm just uh, just live life, man. Just chill, relax. You uh, you talked about that gig recently where the bar owner the owner came up to you and said, "This is different music." Yeah, that to me is what I'm talking about. That sort of oh, so that, for, yeah. for you to walk out of there and say, "Okay, there's still some soul. People can still recognize the soul." Yes, yeah, there's I uh, I think that there's a lot of music nowadays that uh, it's kind of like departing from music that is understandable by the general people. Music. To me, the music of what's called the Great American uh, Songbook, Tin Pan Alley, all those songs, even who, people who did not understand music, right. they could relate because it had melody, it had harmony, it had a lyric, it had a, a, a certain feel to it. There's not a lot of that going around right now. A lot of the music is more eclectic. It's more, people are almost like writing to impress Musicians are writing music, not all of them, but they're writing music, I think, to impress other musicians. It's like they're, they're it's, no, it's not about... Uh, it's not about connecting to the audience, per se. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm trying to do nowadays is do what's called the Great American Songbook. I have some songs of my own that I try to play for them, but mostly... People, I, I feel that people like to still hear those songs. There are songs that no matter how many times you hear them, they're still going to be likable and, and accepted. So, um, But it's also the, the delivery. And that night, yeah. I wanted you to talk about the way that you brought pe yeah. hooked people in. The format, a lot of those songs that you hear from Tony Bennett and Frank Sinatra, a lot of those songs are done with like big bands. I'm doing like a very small format, like it's just like myself. It's just me on vocals and trumpet, and I have a, a good pianist, and also, or sometimes not, a good bassist. So it's a trio, and we, we just we just swing, we just feel the music, and just uh, you can dance to it if you want, but you can listen to it, and I would turn around and do a song from. Uh, whether it's from Cold Porter and turn right around and do a song from Frankie Valley, give it a right feel, or do a song from uh, from Billy Joel, yeah, and, and it's going to sound different. And I had the uh, somebody came to me and I thought it was a very different compliment. The guy comes to me and he says, "Man, you guys, you guys do 
cover songs, but you don't sound like a cover band, which is, that's it. I guess this is what, it, what I am doing. I'm not, I'm not doing uh, Billy Joel. If you want to hear, I, I'm doing something Billy Joel, but it's not going to sound like Billy sure, Joel. If sure. I do a song like this guy, it's not going to sound like him. I do a song from, uh, from the 30s, and you're used to hearing it with uh, Frank Sinatra. It's not going to sound like him. I mean, it's gonna. This gonna be my vocal, and I try to emulate him because who, who doesn't? Because the thing is to tell a story. I try to tell a story, to enunciate, to get a feel, to get a vibe. And to me, that's the essence of singing. Forget technique. I mean, you have to have technique, and you have to be in tune. But mostly, you have to. Uh, you have to tell a story, get into the lyric. Who are you singing to? What are you singing about? Uh, what's the song about? Is it a happy song? Is it a sad song? All of that. It's also about how are you feeling that day too? You know, mm -hmm. what's your story? Yeah, but if you, I think that would be like secondary because you have to feel the way you want sure. people to feel. Um, final question for you. Uh, What's your, what's your message to uh, Johnny Vidakovich? Uh, he's going to be B. watching this. I, I want you to give him an inspirational message. We, there are no guarantees in life. Gratitude is the attitude. What do you have to say to your old buddy, Johnny V? Johnny V, my brother. All I have to say, man, is that I am very fortunate that I got to meet you when you were so young and we were both young. We were able to play together for, for such a long time. And I'm so glad, so proud that I've, we've maintained this friendship through all these years, man. And, and uh, every time I hear you, you're, you're playing some other shit, man. Honest, <laughs> the bistro, right? It all started the bistro. The bistro, that's where it all started with Dave West. And every time I hear you, man, you, I, I say it again, you're playing some other shit. Okay? And it's always so impressive and fresh. And, and I just, oh, man, I could talk for hours about you but uh, you get the message bro I love you and um, you and Deborah and uh, Laura you're my my friends for so many years and uh, just hope that the good Lord keeps us on the planet for as long as possible man and all the best Rodrigo much love to you man we'll do this we'll do this again in some form but um, I so, look forward to so it. honored to be able to connect with you in person man it was it was a pleasure. We had a great lunch, and uh, your dad was great. Yeah. He looks like a very happy man, and uh, he is. Much love and long life. Yeah. God bless. This is the Jake Feinberg Show. We'll see you later.